let's talk about wrestling. I wish I could have come up with a favorite wrestling moment, but I thought about Bash at the Beach 2000. One of the most Oof. controversial wrestling Whoa. moments. Hulk Hogan versus Jeff Jarrett for the WCW title. Vince Russo, who was with WCW at the time, who wrote the match, he had Jeff Jarrett coming out on top, retaining the title, and then later on, champ, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, facing Booker T in the main event for the WCW title, and that Booker T would go on top. Right? Mm hmm Hulk Hogan won the match against Jeff Jarrett because I believe he exercised his creative control clause, which means that he can determine the outcome of the match and how his character was portrayed or presented. And then in the match, Jeff Jarrett laid down on the mat, Hogan looking stunned, disbelief, pins him, one, two, three, gets the title, walks home, but then Vince Russo, whew, he <laughs> cut a promo, killing Hulk Hogan, and then later on, Jeff Jarrett versus Booker T for the WCW title. Booker T won. Great moment for Booker T. <sighs> Man, um, what are your thoughts about Bash at the Beach? I set the tone for it. Look, I don't think people understand how huge Bash at the Beach was. Bash at the Beach, look, let me, let me tell you something. Bash at the Beach was where some of the greatest matches that you ever want to see happen. Bash at the Beach was equivalent to SummerSlam with the WWE. Hey, we saw Hulk Hogan turn heel. Where? At Bash at the Beach. You saw, you saw Goldberg extend his streak against Kurt Henning in arguably one of his greatest matches. At where? Bash at the Beach. You saw Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone with DDP and Hollywood Hogan. Where? At Bash at the Beach. So guess what? Bash at the Beach had a hell of a rap sheet for years to come. Years to come. So, I mean, for that to go off of that, I think that was the death nail for WCW at a certain point, man. Because guess what? You know, for you to, back then, it wasn't the internet age like it was now. We wasn't really, we didn't know that necessarily the fix was in at a certain point. And I think, although that was one craziest, that was one of the crazy, that pulled the curtain back a little bit too much. That pulled the curtain back a little bit too much, if you want me to be honest with you. Um, as far as Vince Russo is concerned, man, look here, man. If you want to... The one person who I would love to interview, and I've been on record saying this, one person who I love to interview, man, is Jim Cornette. Because, man, I know his language can be a little bit colorful, but like I said, I want his knowledge because of how long he's been in the wrestling business. But when he, when you talk about Vince Russo, man, it's kind of like, ooh, be ready for some four-letter words out there. You know what? Because guess what? Jim Cornette got him for it as far as Vince Russo, and I understand. It's kind of like the way Jim Cornette looks at wrestling the way we view sports. It's a way of life. This is what I do. I love it. I love what I do. I love coming out here entertaining. It. I love, I'm not just in this for the money. I am in this because I love it, and I can make a difference. I can show some young people how to make money as well. I can send that i can send the next generation off with my knowledge and everything i could show that that the wrestling industry not only the wrestling industry but history itself you can learn more from the past than you ever can from the present because history always repeats itself and if you look at a lot of wrestling you know history often repeats itself you know uh, you know hey i would say if anything kill wcw especially towards the end, it'll have to be Vince Russo. I think that people talk about the finger poke of doom, but them really, and I think that's why it took Booker T so long to get over 
with the WWE fans because they look at his first title win as like, okay, you had your first title run, but it was at the expense after we knew the curtain got pulled back a little bit at Bash at the Beach. And I think that tainted Booker T's first title win. That should have been arguably the biggest night of his life, him finally going over. Not only that, and you know I hate to bring this up, but it is history, him being only the second black world heavyweight champion in the history of WCW. Remember, the first one was Ron Simmons for Root back, I think, years earlier. 1992, I think. 1992, yeah. when he beat Vader. So that was history in the making within itself. And for him to go over after being the world television champion, after being U.S. champion, after being one of the best tag teams, arguably, in WCW and, you know, uh, wrestling history. For him finally going over, but it being on the night of that promo and that controversy was a disservice to Booker T, and I don't think he deserved that at that point in time. But as far as that night is concerned, I point to that one moment as the day that WCW died. It, it was just a matter that WCW ended that night. It took it another year for it to fully for it to fully die, but that was the day it died. I also think it also not only hurt Booker T, but also Jeff Jarrett. Because she, because Champ, he comes from a wrestling background. I think both his father and his grandmother were wrestling promoters. And yes, Jerry I was watching, Jarrett. Yeah, Jeff Jarrett. And I was watching Dark Side of the Ring. I love the biography series, folks. Go watch it on Hulu. He was contemplating, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to be involved in this type of situation? And, you know, that really, like, messed them up. And I'm glad you mentioned Jim Cornette, champ, because I cannot say the stuff that Jim Cornette <laughs> wants to do to Vince Russo. You're going to have to go on YouTube or do some research on that because, again, I'm on the air. If you want to hear what I have to say, maybe I can do it on some different platform, but I won't do it on mine. Jim Cornette took the wrestling business seriously. And Vince Russo, like I said, man, he doesn't know what he's doing with the wrestling. Champ, remember another controversial moment for wrestling? The brawl for all? And all because he tried to... Remember, all because he... Uh, dark side of the ring, because John Bradshaw Layfield was talking trash, how he could whip everybody's you-know-what, and then Vince Russo came up with the idea. And if you watch Jim Cornette's face while he's going after Vince Russo for how stupid the idea was by hurting the integrity of the wrestling business, putting people's health career in jeopardy, especially with Dr. Jeff Steve Williams. Rest in peace, yeah. Yeah, rest in peace. And after that, I don't think, Champ, after that, after the World Brawl, he never returned back to the WWE. No, he ended up going to WCW down there. He ended up, he ended up going to WCW, and ironically, you know, he was down there with not only Vince Russo but Ed Ferrara as well. And you know, hey, if you think that Vince, excuse me, if you think that Mr. Cornette had some cross words to say about Vince Russo, you should hear what he had to say about Ed Ferrara as well. So when yeah. he was in charge of TNA, so hey, those are two people that you know, Jim Cornette doesn't really care for, and rightfully so, you know, okay. especially when they made, and that was during the time where not only, you know, they killed, not only did they kill off Dr. Death figuratively in, her, in the WWE, that was during the time where, remember, the great Jim Ross, who is currently, you know, recovering right now, get well soon, he was having issues with a lot of, you know, his health issues. And remember, they were making fun of it. And that is why you had a, you had a lot of incidents with him, Vince Russo, and Ed Ferrara. Because the thing is, he didn't like them making fun of Jim Ross because of his Bell's palsy and his health episodes. So that's another reason why they didn't like he didn't like him as well. Because how could you make fun of someone with Bell's palsy? Would you make would you want someone to make fun of a family member that you had with that with that defect? No, you wouldn't. So why would you go on TV and make fun of that? That's another reason why Jim. I know Jim Cornette did not like Vince Russo or Ed Ferrara, but that was a, like I said, 
that is um, I think what Vince Russo failed is this. All the ideas that you had in WWE, they were right place, right time with the right people. You can't necessarily replicate that in the WCW where you have a lot of these Asian, these aging stars in Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, and Kevin Nash, Lex Luger, a lot of these other guys along with a lot of other stars that wasn't necessarily made men as of yet. You had the perfect catalyst in the WWE. You had Stone Cold. You had The Rock. You had DX. You had The Nation. You had Ken Shamrock. You had some of the, that's arguably the deepest roster you're ever going to see. It was so deep, they ran four shows a week on live television. Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, Saturday Night Shotgun, not to mention one of the lost shows, and I miss it to this day, Sunday Night Heat. Yeah, That's how deep that roster was. You can't bring that same mentality from that locker room into WWE where you had a deep star-studded cast to a team where Hulk Hogan is still the main attraction. And you had a and you had a wrestler, no disrespect to Goldberg, UGA, go dog, but you didn't necessarily have a guy that can give you a one hour match in Goldberg. You didn't necessarily have that. You didn't necessarily have a Shawn Michaels. And you had a whole lot of guys that were being misused. So you can't bring that same mentality because it's going to hurt you more than it does good. And plus, you didn't have a long term plan like you did in WWE where you knew you had the backing of a Vince McMahon. You had to deal with a lot of corporate guys who, you know, for lack of a better term, didn't know anything about the wrestling business. So that's the reason why I believe Vince Russo failed in the WWE, the, well, excuse me, the WCW because of that. And say what you will about, about him. Hey, a lot of things happen. But having a Vince McMahon to filter your ideas through, especially back then, at his apex where he was having, where people don't realize how quickly he was having to recreate these guys. Remember, people don't understand this. Two years earlier, before Stone Cold Steve, well, one year earlier, before, one, just one year earlier, before Stone Cold Steve, well, excuse me, let me retract that. <laughs> just six months in 1996, when he faced Bret Hart at Survivor Series, remember what Stone Cold was doing in WrestleMania? He was facing off against Salvio Vega. Let me say that again. He was facing off against Salvio Vega just five to six months earlier. So Vince was having to create, having to recreate stars very, very quickly. Not to mention he lost Shawn Michaels in the heat of that, of the Monday Night Wars. You lost your, your showstopper in the middle of the war. Yeah, so people don't realize how quickly he had to recreate those stars after losing a Hulk Hogan, after losing a Macho Man, he, especially after losing a Bret Hart. Everybody thought it was over. So it pays to have a Vince McMahon to filter your ideas through regardless of what may have happened uh, off the camera. But you didn't have that in the WWE. You had more guys who did more corporate guys who didn't know anything about wrestling. And that's another factor that went into it as well. BRF. Mm. Bash at the beach. That was one of my favorite. That was one of my favorite WCW pay-per-views. I feel like with Bash at the beach. Okay. If you look at the WWE, you look at their big four. I mean, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series. I, when I grew when I grew up, I was WCW was my go-to at first, and I felt and I kind of feel like their equivalent to their big four. I feel were Super Brawl, the Great American Bash, Bash at the Beach, and Starcade. I feel would kind of be like their their equivalent to the big four. And Bash at the Beach 2000 just it destroyed it really destroyed that pay per view, and it's like just all of the 
the just the aura and the legacy that 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 show in particular had built and you know just i felt i felt i felt bad for i felt bad for booker i felt bad for jeff jarrett because they they should have been they should have been two of the main attractions at the time they should have been two of the guys getting pushed but you know it was always hogan and it was always flair and then it was always Nash and Luger and just like, I mean, you, you got Booker T, you have Jeff Jarrett, you got Scott Steiner, you got these guys coming up, these new, these new younger guys trying to make an impact, and you keep pushing the same people over and over and over, and it's just, it's, it's just like, I mean, what it, it's like as like as a guy as a guy to come up in the WCW at the time. What do you do when you know the same people are going to be getting the big pushes, and then like when you feel like your time has come, one of those guys could be like, "Hey, you know, we should go this route because you know creative control and da 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 da." And it's like, like what do you do? Like what do you do? What do you do with that? Like I still I still feel personally like the finger poker doom at the beginning of '99 after a starcade where Nash beat Goldberg. I felt like that was the start of the downfall. And I and and I remember hearing Nash kind of explain. It. I think basically what it boiled down to is ultimately they knew Goldberg was kind of starting to get a little stale with the fans. He was starting to get kind of played out. It was like. He was going to go to certain areas where he was going to be booed, like the wrestling cities or whatnot. They were going to get booed, and they were going to be the ones getting cheered. And just like, and I and I remember, I remember that. I remember I bought Starcade '98. I saw that pay per view. That's one of the best. That's one of the best pay per views I've ever seen. Because that card, top to bottom, was loaded. I mean, your opening match for Starcade '98 was a triple threat for the Cruiserweight Championship between Rey Mysterio, Juventud Guerrero, and Billy Kidman. Tell me. That wasn't, I mean, now come on. And it's just like, it's just like, I feel like the finger poke of doom after that just started killing the momentum and then it was like Bash at the Beach was just like that big old black ribbon of death. It's how I feel like it was. And 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 let me tell you something that and it, and it, and I fi- and I hate it because they honestly could have really done something with that if they did it right because at the end of the day wrestling is still about controversy and it's still about the fire that you can catch with certain situations and I feel like if they had done it right they really could have done something they really could have made something out of it but it's just like. They did. It's like they didn't know what they were doing. It's like they didn't know how to like really capitalize on something that they really could. They could have created a crap ton of momentum from that if they really did it right. But it was just like it kind of, it kind of just, it was, it was like a big, it was like a big snowball effect after that, and it just kept building and building and building and building, and then just you know ultimately it got to you know the the Daytona Beach Nitro where. WWE bought them out, and you know, just that was it. So yeah. I just, I, so it was just like for for me, Bash at the Beach 2000. I feel is like I think it's arguably. I think it's arguably if it's not. I think it's for me. It's arguably like the biggest black eye, just just because of just the. It's, it's 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 like they were they were they were, it's like for me it's like they were more worried about trying to create a stir than actually try to build something with some substance to it and that ultimately was what just that was ultimately was what finished it off because you could see in the coming months it was just like it, it was like they had no path they had no they had nowhere to go it was just like random main event here random main event there random main event there it was like there was no purpose after that so bash of the beast 2000 is just yeah i, I for me I, I it's the ribbon it's the, it's the ribbon of death for me when it comes to wcw let's not put all of this on vince russo we also got to put blame on eric bischoff as well 
because of how Bischoff ran WCW in 98 and in 99. I, I, I just think with, um, look, it was a horrible moment. Unfortunately, you could see once the Attitude Era came, WWE was taking over. Eventually in 2001, Vince McMahon bought the company, bought WCW. And when I look at Bash at the Beach, I mean, it, it was a really, uh, it, it's like the dark, it's like, it was horrible. It was horrible for the company, it was horrible for the wrestlers. The only person that benefited was Hulk at the end of the day, because again, he had the, the money, of course. He, I mean, and rightfully so. Whether anyone liked it or not, Hulk Hogan did have creative control in his contract, so it was well within his right to determine the outcome of the match. I just hated it because, again, to Champ's point, it took away a great moment for Booker T because not a lot of black wrestlers get that type of opportunity to become heavyweight champion at that particular time. And also, you put Jeff Jarrett in a horrible predicament. And like with Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff, the problem with Vince Russo is that he tried to use the Jerry Springer approach. And the other problem, champ, with Jim, the problem Jim Cornette has with Vince Russo, it was it's not just the fact it's not whether Vince Russo knew wrestling or not, is how he treated wrestling. He acts as if it's nothing, it's not real at all jim Cornette takes huge offense to it because again you're factoring you have to take into account the injuries you have to take into account the mental the physical aspect you have to take into account how he takes wrestling wrestling is it's his life he eats breathes sleeps wrestling and for people like vince russo to act as if it's not that big of a deal and I hate to say this, but Vince Russo is, is proven more and more. I don't like using the term. It's proven that he's a liar. I can't trust him. Because, again, the Montreal screw job champ. What Jim Cornette recalls Vince Russo eyes bugging out, to which Jim Cornette explained the double cross move. Mm -hmm. Putting Shawn Michaels on uh, the sharpshooter which is bret hart's signature move on bret hart i don't know look i believe jim Cornette's story way more than i believe vince russo's story because at least jim Cornette is getting into detail and in the dark side of the ring season one episode two of the montreal screw job i don't know if it was his attic or his basement but there was a huge collection of wrestling books classical wrestling books and magazines and he said you can learn so much stuff about modern wrestling from these classic wrestling books and magazines because history will always repeat itself then he brought up the other montreal screw job remember 1931 the battle of Henry de Glon. yes stranger lewis versus henry de Glon, in which henry de Glon put stranger lewis's signature move on strangler lewis and they won the match Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Chan. Yeah, because and, they, yeah, they bid him. Act yeah, like they bid him. him. Yeah, they bid him. Like they bid him. Come to find out his manager bid him in the back. So. Right. And when Jim Cornette was asked a question by Vince McMahon, because Vince Russo and Jim Cornette were at Vince McMahon's house when they discussed the outcome, he recalled Vince McMahon asking him, well, how would you do it, pal? He says, like, Vince, double cross him. Put it, put Sean on the sharpshooter on bread which is the signature move and vince Russo, I, i'm sorry man I, I i just it's really hard to take him like honestly seriously i'm not gonna say he is completely responsible for wcw eric bischoff has to take culpability for wcw as well mm -hmm. because he mentioned during 98 99 his finances Mm -hmm. They were bad at the time, and they and they had to move on. Plus, also, Vince Russo, he said on Dark Side of the Ring, the ratings went up when he joined WCW from Octo in the first three months, from October of 99 through December of 1999. Dave Meltzer, well-known journalist, he claimed that no, that wasn't the case. 
each month the ratings went down slightly. So I don't know who to trust. I don't know who who's telling the truth, whether Vince Russo or Dave Meltzer. But um, when I look at Bash at the Beach, it, it was just a horrible moment because um, the curtain was pulled back. And once that was pulled back, how is people going to take WCW seriously? And then the other things that Vince Russo tried to create that he brought to WWE with the Attitude Era. Yes, it. Yeah, I'm not taking. Uh, yes, Vince Russo did put the wrestlers back then in a situation better utilized. But at the same time, you had talent to work with. You had Stone Cold. You had The Rock. You had Undertaker. You had Mankind, and Champ. It also is a testament to the greatness of Paul Heyman, because when he was with ECW, when he had Austin, when he had Mick Foley and others, he did a better job utilizing them as far as not only with matches, but also cutting promos and also getting the the real authentic selves. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a testament, even though Jim Cornette doesn't really like Paul Heyman. I don't think he likes Paul Heyman and vice versa. But at the same time. Paul Heyman is another example of how to utilize the talent around you as well and how to maximize off it. Vince Russo, to me, I just feel like he's just taking credit. And he even admitted that people have accused him of taking credit. So I don't know. You know, I I never will forget, piggybacking on what you said about Jim Cornette and Paul Heyman, he said, I've had my opinions about Paul Heyman, but you will never hear me call him a stupid guy. Because he is, because he knows what he's doing. He said, "I just had differences on how the way he did things with ECW." But I mean, that, that interview's out there. I'll send it to you a little bit later. Um, yeah, I saw that. Oh, I saw that. I, yeah. But when, but when it comes to Vince Russo, it's a glaring difference. Yeah, it's very, very different. I gotta ask y'all this question before we move to the next segment. And this has been on my mind, and I just didn't. I never asked anybody this because I didn't want to be. You know, sound dumb. Do y'all think that Vince Russo created that moment at Bash at the Beach so he can finally recreate the Montreal screw job in his own little way? In my opinion, he said that he pitched everything on Dark Side of the Ring. If you watch it carefully, champ, he said, I pitched the idea to Hogan and Jared with Hogan winning the match with Jared laying down to cutting the promo, oh, to the Hogan leaving, to cutting the promo, killing Hogan, to Booker T winning the title. Bischoff claimed it wasn't my idea. I guarantee you it wasn't Hulk Hogan's idea. And by the way, Hulk Hogan did have creative control. Bischoff also claimed that he and Hogan had no idea that Booker T was going to win the title. And also remember doing that doing that as well, Russo was ruled out because they called, you know, Ben Bischoff called Brad C. Yeah. The head of TNT, the head of TNT at the time. And so. Eric recalled Brad Siegel telling him, go with Eric's idea. Yeah. So, I, 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 I mean, like I said before, man, Vince Russo – He's not really particularly well liked around the wrestling industry. Let, let, let's just leave it at that. Only, I mean, the only people that really have said positive things about him, Booker T, of course, because of the moment, Mick Foley. I mean, it's hard to say anything negative about Mick Foley. He's like the nicest guy in the wrestling business. Even Jim Cornette has admitted it. But when I look at WCW, and, and, and you had talent. Mm-hmm. Tremendous talent, and the fact that you were unable to maximize it and you and fail, I mean, damn man. And, and and Eric Bischoff, he was with the older um older guys, the Hogan's, the Flairs. The Trusso was with more of the younger guys. You had an embarrassing amount of talent, and um Bret Hart, he did an interview with Stone Cold Steve Austin on Broken Skull. Broken Skull Sessions, he rec- he actually said, you know what? You know who told me about how WCW is? You. Because don't go there. 
A lot of people talked about don't go to WCW. They're, they're the dumbest imbeciles. They don't know exactly what the hell they're doing. And Bret Hart even admitted that his tire spun out from the time he arrived until the moment his career ended. Hey, I got to say this, man. Look, for you to not utilize Bret Hart and you to not, the biggest injustice in, in wrestling history was you not putting Bret Hart in the ring with Hulk Hogan. Whew. That is a that, that is a trap. The new generation versus the golden age. The match that we had yet to see. That was the biggest injustice that you ever did. Another huge injustice that you did is that you didn't put Sting in the ring with Bret Hart to defend the title the very next month. That should have been the very next guy because he was the referee during that match. So huge big injustices that you did not once but twice because guess what? You could have still been beating them in the ratings right there. Hogan versus Bret Hart. The history was there. Him not wanting to – him rumored, I will say rumored, not wanting to pass the torch to Bret Hart in WWE, instead opting to go with Yokozuna. That was the rumor, but, you know, hey, what was it like peanut butter? Everybody has it. But What's wrong with peanut butter? I can't say – look, I'm not going to use profanity on your show. You, I had to use another term. <laughs> but um, allergic to peanut butter or something? No, I eat a lot of tub fools. But, <laughs> but let me get to my point. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, you know, for you not to put Bret Hart in the same ring as Hulk Hogan, big injustice. For you to not to put Sting at his at the height of his career in the ring with Bret Hart, another injustice. There were so many matches that you could have had what Bret Hart, you could have you could have utilized him very, very strongly as far as you know storyline. There were so many guys in WCW that he could have worked with. Hell, you could have reignited the Lex Luger versus Bret Hart feud. Because remember, Bret Hart beat Yokozuna, whereas Lex Luger didn't. Yeah. The Lex Express did not succeed. So there are so many storylines that you could have made with Bret Hart there. I mean, mainly with Hulk Hogan and Bret Hart. You could have put Bret Hart over in WCW almost immediately. And you could have did it at Super Brawl. Yeah. You could have did it at Super Brawl the very next year. Instead, you know, Bret Hart ends up fighting Booker T at the time where he wasn't as over for the World Television Championship. And unfortunately, the whole match ends in a smog. So, a lot of things. All 